the harm in religion? It's a tough question to answer, in part because so many people around the world consider themselves religious, and those religious beliefs can take so many different forms that it's hard to tease out what actions we can blame on religion as opposed to blaming on culture in general. And I have two different examples to illustrate this point, and I'm going to split them up into a two-parter. So first up for today, uh, I want to talk about this study published by the Society for Personality and Social Psychology, which found that for people who care about the environment, they are less likely to do anything about it if they believe in a controlling God. This is a really interesting study that looked specifically at American Christians, most of whom are college students which is honestly the makeup of most psychological research that's published in the English language. But in this case, it's highlighted and relevant to the study. So that's nice. Um, there were three experiments done, the first of which was just looking at existing survey data of about 3,000 American adults. The survey questions included whether or not the respondents believed in global warming, believed that it was real, um, and whether they believed it's exacerbated by human activity, both of which the answer is yes. Um, and then whether or not the respondent supported policies that might help alleviate global warming. They also asked the subjects how important they found religion and how often they attended religious services. Among the respondents who understood that global warming is real, um, religious people were less likely to support pro-environmental policies, even when controlling for political orientation and a host of other demographics. The second experiment drilled down on that to figure out if it's religiosity in general or a particular religious belief, the belief that God controls everything that happens and there's not really much that you, an individual puny human, can do about it. They surveyed about 400 American college students split between a Christian college and a secular college. And in addition to the questions about global warming and religiosity, they added a question about belief in a controlling God. They also tweaked the support for environmental policies thing to specifically ask how often subjects were planning to engage in environmentally friendly activities like buying green products. Sure enough, they found that people who believed in a controlling God were less likely to do environmentally friendly behaviors, even if they understood the danger of anthropogenic global warming. To figure out if this was correlation or causation, like if controlling God Christians just happen to be disinterested in helping the environment, or if they're disinterested because of their belief, the researchers then went on to ask 730 Christians to describe their feelings about the environment. Then they had them read either an article about the planet Pluto, or not a planet Pluto, uh, that was the control group, or a piece about how God controls the world. Then they asked the subjects what behaviors they plan to do to help the environment. Sure enough, subjects that read the passage about a controlling God were less likely to say that they would take actions to help the environment. The idea here is that if you think that God is going to do what he will with the planet, it doesn't really matter what you do, so why bother? Now, it's important to note that this problem isn't necessarily restricted to American Christians. Uh, that's what this research is about. But you could, for instance, be so depressed by the current state of the world that you feel that nothing you do matters. Or you could believe that the Muslim God is controlling and nothing you do matters. Um, or you could feel that Large industries contribute such an overwhelming amount of damage to our environment that buying recycled toilet paper isn't going to matter. The interesting thing to me about this study isn't that fundamentalist Christians may be less likely to behave in a pro-environmental way, but that this nothing I do will matter attitude may extend to other areas of their lives. Why support policies that give more people health care coverage if God determines who lives and who dies anyway? 
Why support policies that lift people out of poverty? Why improve quality of life for prisoners? Why stop the overbreeding of cats and dogs? It's all these questions that many years ago made me realize that I'm a humanist. I'm an atheist and that I'm fairly certain there is no God, as I've never seen any evidence for one. Um, I believe that it's most likely that when we die, there is no afterlife and we just go into the ground. So why does anything I do when I'm alive really matter? Well, for that exact reason, because of my beliefs. If there is no heaven, that is the only life that each human and each non-human animal gets. So let's make that life as good as we can for as many people as we can and as many animals as we can. Let's do our best to increase the total amount of happiness in the world. And let's protect the world itself because the more damage we do to the planet, the more miserable we are going to make it for people all over and for future generations, whether they're dealing with severe hurricanes, tornadoes, droughts, or fires tearing through their homes and making the air unbreathable. Does that make humanism a better philosophy than Christianity? I mean, obviously, I think my personal philosophy is better or else I wouldn't ascribe to it. But there are plenty of Christians I know who desperately want to make the world a better place. And I know plenty of atheists and humanists who couldn't give a shit. Which is why I think that while we can talk about generalities, it's more enlightening to drill down on the specifics. What do you believe about our place in the universe? And how does that belief inform your actions? It's fair to say that this study provides compelling evidence that believing that humanity has no control over our destiny is ultimately a dangerous and damaging philosophy.